What is up guys, Coach TJ here. Um, today in this video, I want to talk about some things that you should avoid, common mistakes you should avoid as a face-off guy. Um, these are just some rule of thumbs, things that'll either slow you down or um, obstruct with your clamp or exit or form, whatever it may be. This is great for both players and for coaches um, who otherwise wouldn't know what to look for and their face-off guys that they wanna get better. So the very first thing I look for when I'm coaching a kid is false steps. So you can think of false steps just like a false step in spring, right? If I'm running a race and I take a step backwards before I go forwards, that little step slows me down quite a bit. Um, it's the same concept in face-offs, right? A lot of guys ask me, you know, coach, what can I do to get faster? I need faster hands, faster reaction speed. It's not almost, you know, 90% of the time, it's not about what you can do to get faster, it's what you can do to get less slow. What I mean by that is shave away, cut away the inefficiencies in your clamp that keep you from being fast and efficient. There's all sorts of things that you can look for um, in a kid um, to see what they're doing. That's also why it's so great to record your kids with your phone and or record yourself um, to see what you might be doing to slow you down. Um, super common one is the elbow flare, right? I throw my elbow out before I go over the ball. So it's like elbow here. Um, another one is arching my back or throwing my butt up. Um, you know, right before I, I go for the clamp, I throw my butt in the air and then I get over the ball or I arch my back and then I get over the ball. Um, another one is, you know, stepping with the right foot to kind of catch yourself. Um, you know, all sorts of things that you can find and um, shaving those away from um, your, your face off um, will almost always uh, improve your speed. So the next super common mistake that I see in a lot of kids is what I call spider manning the ball. Um, what I mean by that is using all right hand and no left hand in your clamp um, and doing kind of the spider man motion here to get over the ball and unbending your wrist. So there's no power in unbending your wrist, right? That takes a lot of the tricep and the shoulder out of the motion. Um, what you should do instead is think more about um, opening the door, turning the doorknob or um, turning the screwdriver and using this um, wrist pronation movement to snap over the ball and get this top side wall to slap the ground and get over the top. What you're also doing is taking a lot of the left hand's job out of the, the um, clamp by spider manning the ball since you're not using the left hand. The left hand is really where um, most of the power comes from because it's so far away from the ball, you can generate a lot more force um, and because you know it's not supernated like the right hand. So the left hand is really what allows you to snap over the ball and create that power. Now that brings me to my final super common thing that I see in face-off guys that we want to avoid is um, incorrect left hand movement. Um, so right away, you know, so many times I see a lot of kids just love to throw that left hand forward, right? They, as they're getting over the ball, they want to push the other guy off and they throw their left hand. So the reason a lot of kids do this is that's what they were taught in knee down, right? Because you could get away with this. It actually helped because as you were pushing into the ball with that right hand, you can apply all that pressure with your right hand and just use the left hand to throw it forward and push the guy off. But now that our hand is supinated, we can't do that anymore. Um, so in order to really generate the power and snap over the ball, um, what we should be doing with our left hand is snapping over the top and making a kind of arcing motion down into the ground. Um, some guys throw their left hand in the back a little bit. Some guys throw it in the air a little bit, um, especially have like a burn or a CEO with face flex. And um, most guys though, throw it forward just a tiny bit because um, it kind of helps secure the ball and the pitch. Um, when you do that, you really shouldn't go past um, 10 o'clock. If you think of, you know, the stick being the arm of the clock, starting at nine o'clock, it really shouldn't go past 10 o'clock. Even after the clamp, when you get into the 50-50, um, throwing that left hand forward or moving at all can just be a lot of unnecessary movement and push you off the ball. Example being, you know, if I'm in a lockup with a guy and he throws that left hand forward, you know, since he can't apply right, uh, right hand pressure as well as he could when he was knee down, 
he's actually pushing himself off the ball rather than pushing me off the ball. So when I'm coming around, I'm showing you all of this ball and that allows me as your opponent to just slip in, you know, my eyes light up because that's a free face off win for me. I just fire right in with that hand. So again, too much left hand movement can actually wiggle me off the ball rather than get me over the ball like it did in knee down. You know, in knee down, I could saw down and wiggle under the other guy's head. But since my, again, right hand supinated, I don't have as much pressure pushing over the top of the ball with my right hand. Um, you don't want to move too much, you know, the occasional, if you see an opening, it, the occasional throwing the left hand forward and then coming back to snap over the ball, crank back is all right. But for the most part, you want to keep an even, equal amount of pressure pushing um, with your left hand, you know, making that arcing motion over the top of the ball, stabbing in with your right hand and slowly getting under the other guy's sidewall and pushing into his plastic so you can win that ball. Thank you.